All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started here. So first off, I want to welcome everybody to today's webinar on future proofing your data center with Microsoft Azure Stack. My name is Andy Sirwitz from Altera Software, and I'm joined today with uh, Thomas Maurer. How's it going, Thomas? Hi, Andy. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Hey, not a problem. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate you taking the time today to come talk to us about Azure Stack, which is uh, it's it's kind of all the rage in the IT news these days, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of buzz going out uh, right now. Yep, yep, absolutely. So, so first off, we got a lot of content slated for you here today. So I'm kind of going to scoot through the intro here pretty quick. Uh, we've got a full webinar. So first thing I want to do is just talk about our agenda for the day. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a very brief introduction of myself, Thomas, and uh, the sponsor of the webinar today, Altero Software. Um, and then we're going to get into really what you're here to see. Everything having to do with Azure Stack, what it is, what is Azure Resource Manager, Azure Stack Integrated Systems, Data Center Integration, uh, the Stack Developer Kits, how to get it and test it in your environments, a whole number of different things here. So we've got a very full webinar today. With a Q&A section. Uh, so basically, throughout the webinar, feel free to use the, uh, the questions form and the webinar utility to ask your questions, and at the end, um, time permitting, Thomas and I will, will get to them and address them. Uh, we try to leave about 10 minutes for the Q&A at the end, and sometimes that's not enough. So if you ask a question that doesn't get answered, we always do a follow-up blog post out on our Altero Hyper-V blog at uh, altero.com slash hyper-v. And uh, if you ask a question that doesn't get answered, you can go to that blog post once it's posted, there's a recording of the webinar, there'll be a copy of the slide deck for download, and a full list of the questions and, and all of their associated answers. So again, if you ask a question that doesn't get answered today, be sure to check out that blog post and uh, your question will be there with the associated answer. So from there, I gotta get to some introductions. So first off, uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm uh, the host today, Andy Sirwich. I'm uh, uh, technical evangelist for Altero Software and a uh, Microsoft MVP in the cloud and data center management competency, as well as a VMware V expert. I've uh, been in the industry for going on 15 years now, and uh, my focus has always really been in virtualization cloud services, um, the Microsoft Server Stack, and Hyper-V and VMware. Um, I'm very active on Twitter, so if you uh, have any follow-up questions or you just you like to, to follow technical people on Twitter, my handle's right there. Otherwise, I'm very active on the Altero blogs at uh, altero.com slash hyper-v and slash VMware, respectively. So at this point, I'll hand it over to Thomas for his introduction. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a Microsoft MVP, as Andy is, in the Cloud and Data Center Management Group. And I work as a cloud architect and technology lead at a company called ITNetics. We are focused on Microsoft technology, and we are doing um, engineering and consulting projects, basically in Switzerland and Europe, um, right now. So uh, my focus, I'm coming from the Hyper-V part, but I also did a lot of work now with Azure, OMS, and all the cloud-focused um, topics in the Microsoft world. Um, yeah, and right now I'm doing a lot of Azure Stack work as well. I'm one of, um, I also had the chance to do some POC work with a couple of customers uh, until today. Yep. All right, thank you, Thomas. So real quick about uh, Altera Software, again, the sponsor and the company I work for. Uh, we're a fast-growing developer of awesome, friendly backup software designed specifically for SMBs and mid-market businesses and for MSPs supporting those businesses. Um, our virtual backup solution is trusted by 30,000 customers, 6,000 partners and MSPs, and that uh, flagship product is Altero VM Backup. If you're interested in taking a look at that, you got the URL right there. Um, feel free to go there and take a look. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And uh, with that said, we'll hand things over to Thomas to take you through the bulk of the presentation today. Go ahead, Thomas. Thank you, Andy. Perfect. So let's get started here. We have a lot of uh, things to cover. I just try in that hour we have um, to cover as much as possible and give you an overview about Azure Stack. Uh, to be honest, I could talk about like hours or days about Azure Stack. There are so many things to cover, but really I want to give you an overview and probably will find out some stuff. Uh, and especially if you haven't heard, uh, haven't checked out what Azure Stack really is, this should help you. So let me first introduce you. 
to the Microsoft story, right? Microsoft is one of the only vendors or is the only vendor out there uh, from the big cloud players which can deliver a consistent platform in the public cloud as well as on premise or for service providers as well. So uh, whenever you go and and you need something, doesn't really matter if it's just Azure Stack or Azure or if it's just Windows Server, uh, Microsoft really built that consistent platform and makes it available to you. So if you're running stuff in a private cloud or public cloud, you can also match them in a hybrid scenario. So for example, when you talk about development, uh, you can use the same code, you can use the same tools, uh, the same APIs to develop against public Azure service provider or Microsoft. And then in the background, all of those platforms are using the same virtualization technology, the same management technology. They work across different clouds. Uh, you have the same uh, data and storage uh, possibilities. You can also span data and, and other stuff across different clouds. So if, for example, you can uh, like do a disaster recovery into the cloud, or for example, if you want to just uh, leverage some uh, machine learning in public Azure, you can send data to Azure, use that and then get the results back on-prem uh, and really make sense out of that hybrid cloud deployment. And then last but not least, uh, you have the identity part and this is where your Active Directory ID identity also gets probably an Azure Active Directory ID and so you can use at the same account, the same login credentials to log into Microsoft Azure, to log in on-prem, uh, and also to log in on service provider platforms, right? So, for example, if one, when if, if an employee leaves the company, we only have to disable one account and he cannot log into all the other platforms. And that also integrates into a bunch of other solutions, like if you already run Office 365, for example, in the background, you already have Azure AD, then there are like thousands of third party applications which also support Azure AD. But this is enough about the whole topic. But if you really want to understand uh, Azure Stack, then you have to first really understand what Azure is, right? So Azure is a really fast going public cloud solution. Um, like as with two other vendors, they're probably uh, the largest clouds in the world with thousands of thousands of servers and they are really updating things pretty fast so usually I'm spending a lot of time updating my slide deck uh, but there I found like just a mistake it's now we are right now at uh, 38 regions online regions are basically data center locations which Microsoft offers uh, to deploy but I will talk a little bit about it later and then Azure offers, on top of that, offers some infrastructure as a service um, solutions, right? So you can, for example, deploy virtual machines, containers, you can run um, like store, stuff in storage, you can use networking to build your, basically your data center, your virtual data center up in Azure in the public cloud. But this is not like the huge deal, right? The huge deal is then what Microsoft calls the platform services or the PaaS services. Uh, there is things like IoT, machine learning, you have uh, the app services, which allow you to deploy app service and probably um, run them on auto scale so they can scale automatically. You have large database solutions like uh, data warehouse solutions and table storage and much, much more. And then on the other hand, you have security solutions like Azure AD I mentioned. Uh, you have automation solutions, you have a key vault and a lot of stuff there uh, you can use. And same for as tools as hybrid operations, which can be, for example, backup to Azure or Azure Site Recovery, which allows you to replicate virtual machines and services to Azure. So in disaster recovery, you can fail them over. Um, by the way, this is also where Altaro Backup can integrate as well. But uh, Andy will talk a little bit later on that. So. Microsoft with Azure gives you this huge toolkit, right? Um, or gives your company this huge toolkit. So you can, whatever you deploy, you can run um, in there. So Microsoft offers that uh, in 38 regions right now. Probably they launch today in 39th, uh, I don't know. But they have a pretty good pace in launching new re um, regions recently. So you can choose if you deploy a service or a virtual machine or anything, you can choose in which region uh, you want to deploy that, right? Uh, with Azure Stack, 
Microsoft also offers service providers around the world to offer kind of like new instances of Azure, if you will, or smaller instances of Azure, but, but still, it uses the same APIs and the same technologies, again, um, the same platform, a consistent platform which service providers can offer. And if that's not enough, you can also um, run Azure Stack on-premise in your data center, if you will, right? So if an enterprise needs to have the data in-house, and there are several other reasons um, for Azure Stack, then you can also get an Azure Stack instance inside your data center. So what is Azure Stack exactly? And Azure Stack, a simple way, is an extension of Azure into your data center or in the service provider's data center, right? So there are several reasons uh, why you probably want to do that. Uh, it delivers a consistent experience with Azure, but there, for some reasons, a, a lot of companies or a lot of uh, customers cannot use public Azure, right? There are probably reasons for data sovereignty where you're not allowed to store data outside of your, um, of your company or your country uh, or whatever, right? So this could be a reason why you probably want to leverage the Azure services and the same APIs, um, but you want to keep it in-house, right? That's one reason. Then there are several others. So for example, um, the technical reasons, um, like if you are very, if you are disconnected um, from the environment. So if, for example, you do not have internet access all the time, and, but you, make, you need to run services um, and they would just run fine on Azure, you can also get an Azure stack, which then is not depending directly uh, on internet connection, um, but can like still connect if there is internet connection back. And then the latest one is, another one is technical reasons like latency, right? So this is one of the uh, of the largest uh, technical reasons. Still, if you use the public cloud, in terms of networking, uh, you have to go over the internet or you could use express route, but still this adds a lot of um, like distance to your uh, computer usually, right? So if you work, you can still get a lot of milliseconds or some milliseconds latency. And for some applications, this is not the way to go, right? So you can place an Azure Stack into your site and you can sit very close by to your Azure Stack and have a very low latency. So what is really Azure? So Azure Stack. So Azure Stack is, is the power of Azure in your data center, right? It is an extension of Azure and it allows you to run Azure services in your data center uh, and delivers a consistent platform um, so, for example, you can also go and do dev test in Azure and then run the productive workloads the same way uh, you do that um, on-prem. So, what does that mean? What does the truly hi consistent hybrid cloud with Microsoft Azure mean? So, there are several things. So, starting from the right, um, you have a consistent data platform, right? In terms of database services and things like that, you can, for example, stretch SQL Server databases to Azure uh, and make them available there. Uh, another thing I already talked about is identity, right? On-premise, you have the Active Directory, um, but in the cloud, you also want to have an identity and uh, for your SaaS and PaaS applications. So Azure Active Directory, in combination with Active Directory gives you that hybrid identity, right? So this allows you to have single sign-on to a lot of cloud applications. And then in terms of management and security, you can use the same tools on-prem as well as in the cloud to, over, to have an overview about your systems. And then finally, if you want to use Azure, leverage Azure services like the platform service or infrastructure service in the same way as you do in the public cloud, you can run Azure Stack uh, on premise, right? So to make that a little bit clear, what does consistent mean? So consistent does not mean this is the background, like everything in the back is consistent. Uh, also the look and feel is consistent, right? So this is the Azure portal. Uh, you can see that here. And then this one here is the Azure Stack portal. The only difference you can see here is like the top left, instead of saying Microsoft Azure, it says Microsoft Azure Stack. And well, I just didn't customize it the way, so I didn't pin any services on the left. And obviously, Azure Stack does, of course, not cover today, not all the services running in Azure, especially those where you 
might need specialized hardware. Um, this is probably still a good use case for for the public cloud, right? But if you just want to run virtual machines or app services or SQL databases or other services which do not uh, need different kind of hardware, this is great to run that on prem as well. So the big question is: This is an Azure data center and it hosts thousands of physical servers and to, to deliver all those services, right? And this is Azure Stack. So it's a very small deployment with standard servers, basically. I will talk a little bit about what it is uh, a little bit later. But the thing here is that how do you get from an environment which, is, which has the scale of Azure with thousands of servers to just a four node, which is the minimum deployment, four node deployment of Azure Stack, right? So this is a huge engineering challenge Microsoft took uh, to bring down those services to a small Azure Stack uh, deployment. And just a little examples, uh, the smallest deployment of a SQL Server uh, cluster in Azure is about a thousand nodes. So bringing that down to a four node system is probably not that easy, right? Because it was never designed for that. So, but Microsoft took that challenge and they delivered Azure Stack. And I will show, talk a little bit how that looks like in just a minute. So again, what Azure Stack delivers is basically really the same thing you have in Azure just on-prem, right? A well, not the same thing, but a consistent experience uh, to do so. So on Azure, you have that cloud infrastructure, which is basically operated by Microsoft, and you have a portal and the infrastructure service and a PaaS platform running different workloads, just as Windows Server, Linux, or PaaS service on top of it. And then if you look at Azure Stack, you can also do that now on-premise, right? You get that infra cloud infrastructure, which in the background is powered by Windows Server and other Azure technologies. And then you can also connect System Center to it if you want to, right? Um, and then you can also provide the same portal and API experience with the same set of services or well, a similar set of services, um, IaaS and PaaS services to your uh, internal customers or to your um, hosting customers and so on. So. What I've seen now is that a lot of customers are now building their solutions um, with Azure Resource Manager. So with that, they can do some automation and they can then decide if, uh, if they wanted to run the automation against Azure or against Azure Stack. So let me show you that in a quick scenario with Azure Resource Manager. So this is really the power <laughs> or a lot of power behind Azure, right? The Azure Resource Manager is really the tool which you need to know to understand Azure as well as Azure Stack um, if you want to do a little bit more or really leverage the cloud um, in that way. So um, first of all, Azure Resource Manager allows you to describe a service or a solution um, and do an inventory and define relationships, set tags and links. So all the services you probably deploy, if it's a SharePoint farm, you will need to have some front-end web servers, you need some load balances, you need a network, you need application servers, you need some databases and so on. And you can just describe the whole service uh, in a single ARM template. And this one um, allows us then to deploy the whole thing against against the region and then again you can then take that and deploy it against uh, i don't know a reach azure region in west europe or in the west us or also against the azure stack right so you can really define your deployment and run it against different clouds if you will and then Azure Resource Manager then gives you the control uh, for, for lifecycle management, role-based access, subscription, access control. So there are several things a Resource Manager can do for you. And if you're not familiar with Resource Manager um, and you want to start with Azure Stack, really you can try Azure Resource Manager today in Azure and this will help you how, to, how you get there. So a resource group in Azure Resource Manager is basically just a couple of different services together um, in one group, right? So for example, again, like taking the example from SharePoint, you have some web servers, you have some database servers, you'd have some networks and storage and so on. And you put that together in one group because they are all related together. So you can do the same life cycle management. 
And then I'm not going to go too much in there. But again, you can then use the same way of deploying solutions, especially in an automated way, against Azure in different regions or Microsoft Azure Stack. So this is really the advantage, taking um, advantage of that consistent experience, right? Okay, so by the way, just for me, um, I usually like to see things, how, how they look like. So if I talk about Azure Resource uh, Manager templates or ARM templates, this is basically how such a thing looks like. This is basically a JSON defined file. Uh, in this case, it says to, like we do a storage account, uh, deploy a Microsoft storage account and so on. Um, so this is a description of that. They can be larger, of course, if you deploy more things than just a storage account. But just to understand for those who, who, got, who did not use it um, today. Good. Um, so let's talk about Azure Stack now. Um, you saw why we need to go there, what it is, what it should be. So let's have a look what it really is. So Azure Stack is an integrated system. And when Microsoft came out with the idea of Azure Stack, they had to do some key decisions, right? First of all, how do you deploy a, such a complex solution um, in an auto data center, which is not managed by you, right? So like Azure um, is managed by Microsoft. They can do quickly do changes if they want to. They can fix stuff if they want to. But how do you do that if you do that in a data center, which is not owned by you and not operated by you, right? So that's difficult. So who has ever spent time with, Windows, with System Center at Azure Pack knows that it's a lot of work to design a cloud um, based on those technologies. It's also a lot of work if you run other cloud stacks like OpenStack and, Open and things like this. It's really hard and it takes a lot of time to get there to have a, a cloud up and running. So an integrated system gives you a lot of uh, uh, advantages, right? So Microsoft will define an integrated system and you can order that from different vendors and it will be pre-installed and designed and everything. And I will talk a little bit about that in, in a minute. But this is really bringing you an advantage. Uh, Microsoft also decided what should we do? Should we start with a hyper-converged setup, with a converged setup? So Microsoft decided to use Windows Server uh, 2016 storage spaces direct in a hyper-converged setup. So with that, you have that four node, four node deployment up to 12 nodes, uh, which you then can run services on, right? Without having need of like adding dedicated storage nodes and things like that. The second one is what should they use as management tools? And so they, they are not using System Center directly inside the Azure Stack um, appliance, but they're using like manage Azure management software, which they already run in Azure to manage those components. But you can still use System Center. If you're already a System Center customer, you just attach Azure Stack to System Center. So for example, if you have SCOM, you can get like alerts and health information from the REST API, from the health API in Azure Stack. And then all the environment, again, an integrated system comes as a black box, right? So all the hosts and management VMs are sealed. So you will not get access to the host. So you cannot install any agents on the hypervisor hosts. Uh, even though it's just Windows Server 2016 and Hyper-V, you will not have access to that host. Think about it as a storage array, where you also only have a web um, web front end, which you can access to manage those systems. Um, you will not have access directly to the code itself, right? There's also, in a storage system, there's also some maybe Windows or Linux behind it, Windows embedded running. Um, there is something running an operating system, but you do not get access to that uh, operating system. And the same thing uh, is happening for Azure Stack, right? To make it not, to make it upgradable and clean uh, and secure, uh, Microsoft really treats Azure Stack as an appliance. And then also they made sure that it can now scale. So as to of today, you can buy from a very small um, four node deployment up to 12 nodes. And in the future, Microsoft will also then offer you to add more nodes and more racks to it. So you can grow and, and get a larger deployment out there. So the Azure Stack Integrated System, again, as I told you, that's coming as an appliance or uh, as a black box for you, if you will. And it's optimized for the hardware and software. So Microsoft did all the validation with the vendors, which hardware they should use, um, which, which firmware and drivers should they use, and so on. That they play very well with the software. And also supports and services come together, right? You just order Azure Stack. It's not like you go with Azure Pack 
where you had to order some hardware, you had to download Windows Server, you had to download the uh, System Center and, and Azure Pack, and then do create an architecture for that. That's not how it works. You just go and order Azure Stack, and all the architecture and things will be done for you. So this is basically what it looks like. It still uses standard components. There are at least two top-of-the-rack switches, a BMC, an out-of-band switch for ILO management, for example. And then you have at least four servers, uh, rack mount servers, um, like special ones. So not really special ones, but uh, just default uh, rack 2H uh, uh, rack um, servers. So Microsoft did a lot of stuff to make that possible, right? So have, let's have a look at this. So Microsoft, as I mentioned, did the whole architecture. They did the validation of the hardware. They told the hardware vendors which hardware to use. Um, which drivers, which firmware, which disks are working, and, and so you get a really predefined deployment, and you can make sure you can be sure that this is really running, right? Um, Microsoft or the hardware vendor then does also the deployment and configuration and the provisioning of, of Azure Stack. So if you order it, you do not have to do the installation by yourself. Um, the in, my, um, well, the vendor will deploy that in the factory for you, and then do the installation and integration. Uh, for you on site, so this should be this should be um, very very simple. So you do not spend a lot of time on that. And I will talk a little bit about how you integrate that in your data center. But think about it as buying a new appliance. Just put it in there. Uh, you connect it to your data center, and and that's it. Uh, they also validate it after the deployment. Then it has an own monitoring and diagnostic service running in the back. So if something goes wrong, Azure Stack will see that. Uh, you will not need to build your own monitoring for Azure Stack to see which component do I really have to monitor. You just go and check the Azure uh, Stack, uh, the a uh, health API to make sure if there are any alerts and things like that. And Microsoft had a, also a big focus on security, privacy, uh, business continuity, uh, and all that stuff to make sure that Azure Stack really runs at its best, right? And then they also integrated a patching and updating scenario if you so if you want to update Azure Stack, you don't have to think about it. What should I upgrade first? The hosts and the management VM, which management VM in which order? Um, this is all done by Azure Stack itself. So you just get a new package, a new update for Azure Stack, which will also, by the way, add new features. And then you deploy that, and Azure Stack will do the whole orchestration of applying those updates as well. Good. So this slide here, I'm just putting in there. It's basically not that important for you, but it's just to see what, what is in there because it's the Azure Stack architecture. So again, uh, it's very interesting to see, but it usually will never really work with that um, because it's it's coming as a black box. The only thing you will see is the Azure, Azure Resource Manager, this portal, the APIs, the CLIs, the tools you can connect to that. And of course, the admin portal where you then can log in uh, to, to the administration of Azure Stack. But in the background, they have resource providers which manage compute and storage and network. And then a whole bunch of other stuff which makes sure that Azure Stack is running fine, right? Uh, but this you will never touch. You will never see it, actually. Um, the only thing you will see is the admin and the tenant portal and, of course, the APIs, um, except <laughs> you're working with support and you have to troubleshoot something. Good. And at the end, of course, you have network and compute and storage as well. So at the GA, um, there are three solutions available. One is from Dell, one is from HPE, and the other third one is from Lenovo. So as you can see here, um, they are just standard rack servers. You can have them from four up to 12 nodes. Um, with two top of the rack switches, a BMC switch, and what you also have in here, and you can see that the HP solution, HPE solution, very nice. Uh, there's an other server in there called the host lifecycle um, host, <laughs> which is basically just the lifecycle management of those systems. So that you, if you start deploying, they will use that um, to do some monitoring and deployment on that. So this is basically it. You can then order that with a rack, or you can also add it with a virtual rack, which means everything comes predefined, but without the rack, so you can put it in your own rack as well. Um, but if you don't have one, you can just order a complete box, if you will. Then there are other partners like Cisco, Avanad, and Huawei, who are committed to deliver um, Azure Stack solutions. So you really have a large choice of different vendors, um, 
to bring that uh, to the table. So the whole thing, which is also important to mention, again, that consistency comes at the price. Um, well, not at a price in, in a negative way, but also there are some caveats though. Um, the whole design obviously also has to be like Azure, right? So otherwise it's not consistent to Azure. So you have regions, you can also have multiple regions. So that would be, for example, data center one and data center two. Uh, you can have fault domains and upgrade domains. And then what you also take over is the VM sizes of Azure, right? To make sure that those ARM templates work in all of the different clouds and deployments, uh, they have to be consistent, right? And so also the sizes of the virtual machines need to be consistent. So what you can do is then what you have is on top, you have the um, cloud endpoint, like the portal URL where you can then log in. Uh, you can then have several regions. In my case now, it's Zurich, Berlin and Singapore. Um, where I basically have like free data centers, where basically there would be free data centers. Unfortunately, it's they're not my data centers. Um, and then you can have different scale units, which are basically just racks and clusters um, in different locations, right? So they also have to be the same amount, but there can be different scale units. So at GA, Microsoft will, there's a little bit of a downside to it, will only offer one region, one scale unit uh, at the time, but then in future updates, they will let you deploy more and more of those systems uh, and more and more of those racks. Um, that's really important, by the way, to know if Azure Stick doesn't fit today, that doesn't mean that it's not good because Microsoft with, the, with updates is also going forward in a cloud cadence, right? So you will always get updates, not only for security and quality reasons, but you will also get new features. And I will talk about the updating part in a bit. But you get really new features and a lot of new stuff coming. So let's have a quick look at the scale unit. I told you a scale unit is basically a rack or a cluster, uh, if you will, uh, at least four servers and switches, of course. And then you have a hundred gig, uh, 10 gig um, networking ports using RDMA. Uh, so you really have this high, um, high bandwidth, low latency network. It of course, it could also be higher depending on the web. Uh, 65 memory and so on. Um, you can order different sizes of those servers from the vendors, right? So if you think you will put a lot of virtual machines on it, you can buy larger systems. If you want to have like a scale out, um, you can also start with smaller ones. Um, just important to know that all the servers inside one scale unit have to, has to be the same. Uh, if you want to add other servers, you can also do that, but they have then to be in another scale unit uh, in the future. And everything runs Windows Server 2016. It uses storage spaces direct uh, in a hyper-converged setup. So this is what it enables in terms of storage. Um, yeah, and there's basically not more to say. It's like really, really no good known hardware in the industry. And in terms of software, it's really leveraging the Windows Server 2016 software-defined data center solutions. It runs Hyper-V, it runs storage spaces direct, it runs the software-defined networking stack. So a lot of parts we already know, but think about it as a black box solution, so you wouldn't care anyway, but it uses the same technologies. So one question always coming up is then, how do I integrate Azure Stack in the data center? And how do I operate it? And what would be my job if my company would buy such an appliance, right? Uh, would, would they still need me and things like that? So I had a lot of discussions on that and I can tell you, no, don't worry. Um, your job is not gone. Uh, they will use they use Azure Stack will not uh, Microsoft will not operate your Azure Stack, right? For example, so if you're just an Azure customer, you will use Azure resources in Azure, and Microsoft engineers in the back end are operating those systems. In Azure Stack, um, you have also your end customers or your customers or yourself using Azure Stack um, as a customer in that case or you offer that for your service provider customers. But you also have to operate it, right? So there are different roles like a cloud architect, which basically design and integrate the Azure Stack solutions, which makes sense. Like, what do I want to integrate? What, would, what do I want to offer on my Azure Stack? And you need Azure Stack operators, which then operate the Azure Stack um, instance as well, which make sure that I have enough capacity or, or new servers. Um, like have a look if sys uh, all the systems are healthy and so on. So what else is to integrate? Uh, 
if you order an Azure stack, you have to think about several things. So first of all, the largest challenge I can see, or the largest, um, uh, not problem, but the largest challenge in that case, really is the networking part. It's also one of the most important parts. Without networking, nothing else works, right? So you have to connect that to your border devices, which can be done using BGP or static routing to make sure that this is connected, the Azure Stack black box is connected um, uh, to, to your data center. And from there, you have to have other things, of course, like sp space and power and cooling, um, obviously. And then you also want to probably integrate in your data center monitoring and hardware monitoring and ticketing solution. And so Microsoft gives you an API where you then can get alerts and then you can use your existing um, uh, management tools like System Center Operations Manager, for example, or um, System Center Service Manager then to generate tickets, right? So you don't have to replace everything and you do not have to think, how do I monitor Azure Stack? It's very simple, just use that API. And if SCOM, for example, if you use SCOM, then uh, you already get an Azure uh, a management pack for that. And another important thing you have to think about is how you integrate identity. So you have basically two choices. You can integrate with ADFS, uh, if you're running, for example, on an on-premise Active Directory, or you can also use Azure Active Directory if you're already using that. And then um, your logins will be done over Azure Active Directory. So for the operating part, on the right side, you can see how we manage our data centers today. Um, we use tools like that rematcher, like system center and all that kind of stuff to manage that, um, our data centers and our systems. Now, if you run Azure Stack again, as I mentioned, it's an appliance and you have this administration portal where they then can see like the different resource providers. They can be, if they're okay, if their state is okay, if you have any errors, if something goes wrong, you will see that as well. So you will basically have the left side, if you're an Azure Stack operator, you will work with that. Um, this is basically the tool you will use as well as PowerShell and other solutions. So patching, how is patching handled? Again, I mentioned that before. Um, the idea is that they release uh, updates to your Azure Stack, right? And so um, then they will take care that they get uh, applied to the different systems so everything gets patched in a, in a certain order, make sure that everything is okay and checked and so on. Uh, so that's the plan. So you don't have to think about um, how do I need now to patch the host or like first the management systems or whatever. And um, this will be done by Azure Stack. And you don't even have the chance to do so, um, so you, because you don't have access to the host of management VMs anyway. Um, Microsoft will also like go forward with updates um, so they also add new functionality, so you will still have the same consistent experience uh, between Azure and Azure Stack. So think about it, you can also say, okay, I don't want to update right now, but in a certain point in time, Microsoft will like make you update to a new version. Otherwise, with that cloud cadence, in some point in time, Microsoft really updates Azure every day, you will fall so far behind that you do not have that consistent experience anymore. So make sure that this will be like a way where you also go for update after update. So you get new features and, and stay in con stay consistent with, with Azure. Okay, so what if you wanna try it out today without ordering or you wanna do a POC um, or you just wanna check what that Azure Stack thing looks like. So there's the Azure Stack developer kit. Um, with that, it's basically a single node deployment. So you need a large piece of hardware. I will show that in a second, uh, where you then can do download a VHD, and then you can configure what well, the system configures then boot from C VHD, and we'll do the whole installation uh, running certain PowerShell scripts and PowerShell DSC to configure itself uh, until the end you have a, a Azure Stack, a single instance of Azure Stack running. This is only for testing and of course not for production because it's a single point of failure. Uh, it's just, it's not designed for any production workload. It's just for to, for you guys to have a look, to create solutions on. So if you want to have like your old marketplace solutions, or if you want to have a look how you integrate um, into your data center, then that's probably a good test. So what you actually need is basically amount of hardware. So there's a recommended configuration. I will need OS disk if it's need some other disks with a lot of memory. And in my opinion, to be honest, um, what you really need is like two things are really good. 
So if you have a lot of memory, that's good. And if you have very fast SSDs, that's even better uh, because that's basically the, the bottlenecks of such a single node deployment, right? You can then use just a normal server system. It doesn't really matter. It only has to be certified for Windows Server 2012 R2, and then it will just run fine um, on, on your nodes if everything is working. So there's a good documentation out there. Uh, there's a good tool and scripts out there to deploy the Azure Stack Development Kit. Um, the only thing you really need is the right hardware to run it. Good. So we come to the last pieces. So Azure Stack Packaging Pricing and Support. Right, so this this is comes where it becomes more interesting. So I mentioned that high that Azure Stack is hybrid by design, right? This does not this is focusing on technology, but it's also true for the consumption model or the billing and the business model of Azure Stack. So Azure Stack is really treated again as an extension of Azure, uh, and so it is also the business model, right? Um, so there are two business models, if you will, and I will talk about it in just a sec. Um, so what does it mean if I buy such integrated systems? The software will be pre-installed on that integrated system. So again, as I mentioned, not you cannot download it or anything and install it by yourself, um, except for the dev kit, but for the production environment for the integrated systems, you cannot. So it's predefined. Um, there are two ways of um, like, uh, buying the licensing uh, Microsoft or the service usage. There's ent an enterprise agreement or CSP. And I will talk about those two in just a sec. Then um, the hardware is directly purchased from the hardware vendor. So they have also different models. Uh, I know that uh, some vendors like have a flex model uh, where you don't have to pay all the hardware at one point in time, but this is really up to the hardware vendor. And then you need support from Microsoft, for which can be Azure support or premium support. And you also need to have a support contract for the hardware um, with the hardware vendor. So the first business model or the first model is the Azure Stack pay as you go. So this model really um, takes advantage of this cl so-called cloud economics. So you only pay if a customer deploys something, lets it run for 12 minutes, you only pay licenses for those 12 minutes, right? Um, so or hours or depending on what the measurement is right um so it really is you do not pay any licenses if you do not have any customer workloads running on it um to that so this is this is really like you would do in azure and then you get a bill from microsoft where you then have to pay and then you also have to charge your basically your customer as well um, the other one is the capacity model so this is very interesting if you're in in a not connected or in a disconnected environment where you cannot send data to, to Microsoft about the usage um, and probably or you don't want that for some reasons, um, then it's a, there's an option using enter the enterprise agreement. But you have to have an enterprise agreement for that one. And then you can choose between two packages. So if you pay, it's basically licensed per core per year. So uh, you pay uh, the physical hardware course per year in a fixed rate. Um, doesn't really matter how much you deploy on top of it. It's just really the license the hardware. Uh, one of the packages includes just virtual machines and Azure storage and the networking part. And if you want to run the PaaS services like app the app service package and virtual machine and storage, then um, it's not it's that package as well. So it costs a little bit more because you can also um, use different or more services. And there's an interesting note in the white paper which explains that. Um, so it says Microsoft expects pay as you use model to be the most economical option, and which is a very, very nice way of saying that the CSP um, option should be cheaper than the enterprise agreement option, like the capacity option, right? So if you're more interested in that, I have put a link in here. Um, I wrote a blog post about it where I have a little bit more, where I explain it a little bit more, where I also have the links to the official websites, to the different places you can go, with the different blog posts linked and so on. Um, you can make sure that um, you get there all the right information here. And then um, just one thing I want to add for support. So I told you that you will need a support contract with the hardware vendor, but with Microsoft and then question comes up, who do I call? So at the end, it doesn't really matter who you call. Um, Microsoft and the vendors have um, coordinated an escalation process 
which um, like if it's a hardware vendor, hardware issue, it goes to the hardware vendor. If it's a software issue, it goes to Microsoft. Um, so if you don't know, just call one of them. Um, if you know that it's the hardware vendor, obviously you will connect, contact the hardware vendor and so on. But um, this should be very, very simple, a very, very streamlined customer experience. Good. So with that, I hope I could uh, have, have answered a lot of your questions. I uh, gave you a quick overview about Azure Stack and um, hopefully you're interested in that product. Uh, with that, I will give it back to Andy, which will talk a little bit about uh, Altero VM Backup and how you can connect it to Azure and probably also to Azure Stack, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll be talking a little bit more about that. And first off, thanks for uh, for sharing all that information with us, Thomas. That's that's a lot of good stuff. There's certainly a lot to digest there, and there's certainly much more to uh, to find out there. Absolutely. So, um, so first off, let me go ahead and share my screen here. And what I'm going to do real quick is um, I want to give people a little bit of time to ask questions. So a reminder to everybody, feel free to use the uh, answer form there in the go to webinar control panel there. And if you have any questions, feel free to send them our, our way. Uh, first off, Thomas, are you able to see my screen? Just want to double check. Yeah, I can see your screen. Perfect. Thank you, sir. So again, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to submit them. Uh, I'm just going to cover a few things here in the next couple of minutes. First off, I want to start with our flagship product, and that is Altero VM Backup. So uh, we recently came out with version 7.5, and um, one of the things that we recently added was support for using Azure as a backup target, which I'll get to that in just a second. But just a couple of general things about our product um, and Altero in general is that we focus on a couple of key areas. The first thing being that we want our product to provide you very efficient, easy to use backups. Uh, on top of that, we want the product to give you full control of your backup operations and provide all the capabilities that um, you're looking for in a backup operation. You know, we provide all you know, some of the advanced features that you're looking for, like uh, compression, deduplication, uh, encryption, instant boot, things like that. I mean, things that people have come to, to expect in a backup application. <clears throat> um, outside of that, one of the things that I'm really proud about uh, Altero for is our support team. We don't do tiered support at Altero. Um, you know, you're not going to get the whole, have you tried turning it off, turning it on? Uh, <laughs> You're not going to get that question. You're not going to sit in escalation queues. When you call our support team, you get a product expert that owns your issue from start to finish, and our response times are, are very fast. So we've been very, very happy with our support team. Um, I mentioned uh, deduplication. In version 7, we introduced a new deduplication engine into the product, and we stacked that deduplication engine up against some of our competitors, and we actually came... Uh, quite a bit ahead of them in some of our dedupe tests so we've been very happy with that and if you're interested in trying out a 30-day trial we've got the link there um, at altero.com slash vm dash backup now um, i mentioned cloud backup to azure so that's something new that we've recently added into our product um, you can actually add an offsite location inside of our product. All you need from the Azure side is the connection string, just a randomly generated string of text that associates um, that associates the storage location with an Azure storage account. Now, that applies to Azure itself and also to a storage account hosted inside of an Azure Stack deployment somewhere. So this really fits two scenarios. So um, the first being if you're an end customer and you want to leverage cloud storage of some sort, but you don't want to go to Azure, which is, you know, a global cloud player. Maybe you're more comfortable using a regional um, service provider and they happen to have an Azure stack at that location. So you could you could provision an, a, a storage account inside of that Azure stack and point our software to it and use it as an offsite backup target. The other use case would be maybe you're a managed services provider and you have an Azure Stack implementation inside of your data center that you're using to host workloads for customers. Your customer could come in there, they could provision their own storage account and using our product on-premise, vault those backups off-site. So there's a couple of different options here. 
And what I really wanted to do is I wanted to show you just how easy it is to set this up. So here I've got a lab instance of our product. Um, it's been established for a little while. So you see quite a bit of data here. But if I go over to backup locations, <clears throat> You can see in this right-hand column, I've got my list of offset locations. And I already have an Azure storage account associated with my installation, and that's where I'm sending some of my offsite backups. Now, if I want to add a new offsite location, so in, the, in, in this case, let's assume I'm, I'm connecting to a Azure Stack storage account. You just come in here, say cloud backup to an Azure storage account, hit next. And there's not really a whole lot to mess up on the screen. You have one field here for the connection string. If you click this link here, it'll send you to documentation on how to create a storage account. Um, the documentation is specific to Azure, but the process should be very, very similar for Azure Stack. Once that's set up, you grab your connection string, paste it in here, click finish, and then you'll have that storage account available to start sending offsite backups to. So it's really, really super easy to set up. Um, so with that, hopefully everybody's had um, a chance to get their questions in. Um, if you haven't yet, feel free to use the question form to go ahead and ask your questions. Uh, again, just a reminder, if we for some reason don't get to your question, um, we will uh, we'll be sure to uh, include those in the follow-up post that we put on our blog out at www.altero.com slash hyper V. And with that said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go through some of the questions here. Uh, so one of the first things I wanted to cover, Thomas, is um, additional resources. So let's say that uh, I'm brand new with Azure Stack. And um, you know this presentation gave me a lot of good information, but where do I go for more information now? Um, how do I find detailed instructions on how to get it set up inside of my environment? How do I how do I dive deeper and what components should I really, really focus on? Yeah. Oh, that's an excellent question, by the way. And it's not just if you're interested in Azure or Azure Stack, it's also when you're interested in Azure. So Microsoft offers, there are several platforms, I have to say. There's a lot of, of content out there already. So Microsoft has a very good documentation already set up for Azure Stack, especially on the Azure Developer Kit. So you can go out there and, and probably install that by yourself and test it out. If, if you have that done or if you want to do something else or you do not have the hardware to test it out, uh, there are also a lot of videos on YouTube. So Microsoft is um, uh, heavily delivering videos on YouTube uh, uh, where you can have a look and they, they explain a lot parts of Azure Stack as well. Um, and then if you're really not familiar with Azure um, and, and you want to start with Azure Stack, I really recommend that you have a look at Azure itself. Um, there is, you can go and if you have a, um, you can do a trial account and you, or if you have MSDN subscription, you can use that one and then get familiar with the Azure interface, with the Azure CLIs, the Azure APIs, and especially the Azure Resource Manager parts, like deploy an Azure Resource Manager um, template, um, understand the topology of how things work in Azure. And then with that, you get a very good understanding um, how Azure Stack works, because again, um, I can only mention that it is, should be a consistent experience. So this will really help you. If you're not familiar with Azure, go out there, use a, create a trial account, um, make sure you test something out. And then with that, you get a really good understanding of how you use Azure Stack at the end. And then, of course, you have several blog posts. I think you can find some parts on the Altero blog. You can also find some information on my blog as well. Uh, and then, of course, there are several others, other resources uh, to that. Perfect. Thank you, sir. That's that's good stuff. A lot of good places for people to go and get that information. Uh, another question that I'm commonly asked. So it kind of has to do with this whole the cloud way of doing things versus the way that we used to do things on premise. And I got a lot of guys that will come up and, and talk to me about this. And a lot of times they'll have sticker shock as to the cost of a monthly cloud solution because they'll take the architecture that they have on premise 
and they'll apply that same architecture and deployment model to Azure IaaS, or in this case, um, what would that look like on top of, of Azure Stack? And they're surprised at, at how much it costs. And often one of the things that I'll recommend that they do is put as much into PaaS in Azure and Azure Stack as you possibly can. Um, if you're using that pay-as-you-go method, um, and not that that uh, you know, and not the, the perpetual method, but if you're doing pay-as-you-go, would you say it's accurate with Azure Stack to focus on putting as much in PaaS as you possibly can to try and keep those monthly costs down? Would that be pretty accurate? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. I, I have to be honest, I haven't done the math, but what you're saying is absolutely true in Azure, and I expect it to be absolutely true in, in Azure Stack as well. Um, there's also something else I want to add. I mean, the reason for that, for, for being things being so expensive, Azure and all those big large cloud vendors are designed to that you run applications like just for a few minutes maybe, or they give you the chance to rush, run it for a few minutes or even seconds and then shut it down, right? And that possible that that thing to allow you that that comes to a price, right? Because they still have to be ready. So if you want to spin up 100 virtual machines, they still need the hardware, right, to do that. So this is one of the reasons. And then again, as you said, the past services. If you do that, uh, there are two advantages to it. Instead of deploying an infrastructure as a service. If you just deploy a virtual machine, you also have to do. Uh, you can also add to it the operational costs, right? You need to patch the virtual machine, you need to manage the virtual machine, you need to back up the virtual machine. Uh, if you run pass, uh, the system already or Microsoft is taking care of that, right? So it's designed to to basically run backups, uh, to to get patched and to get newer versions, and you can just just focus on the application itself, and that's a huge advantage. It's not only about the cost of the service, uh, but it's also about the operational cost. And absolutely, I think um, putting as much in pass um, does even make does make sense in Azure Stack as well. Perfect, perfect. And then um, one last question I wanted to cover here. Uh, we had somebody ask, uh, and it, it has to do with the different switch types. Um, and basically, the question was, you know, what's the difference between the aggregate switch, the TOR switch or top of rack switch and the BMC switch. Yeah, so I was talking about different switches and uh, this is just the usual, well, more or less the usual uh, network architecture. So if you're familiar, if you're a networking guy, uh, this should sound familiar to you. If you're a server guy, obviously then most of the time it's, it's not it's your daily business. Um, but this is basically just, so the TOR switches are basically the top of the rack switches. Um, which your server connect directly to. And if you have multiples of those racks with the top of the rack switches, you also need to connect them together. So one rack can talk to another one. And that's basically done over an aggregation layer um, where you then put like all the top of the rack switches together. Uh, and from there you connect to other things as well. Um, right now i mean that's some old terms as well now from an architecture perspective it also um it's also probably if you're familiar with it as fine leaf architecture and things like that but that's basically that for those two types of switches and then the bmc switch this is just the out of band management switch so on the servers you have for example an hp ilo port where you can remote shut down the physical server and start it and also probably open the kvm uh, Microsoft in Azure Stack needs that to boot up the, VA, the physical server and run the installation on it. And also like the hardware vendors do some monitoring on it. And that's basically also it's just the one giga link and there is a separate switch which they like all the servers are connected to. All right, well, sounds good. Well, with that, um, I think we are at our time. I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. Let everybody get back to their work day. And uh, I wanted to leave you with a couple of additional uh, uh, educational options here. So we've got a, a bunch of additional uh, educational content out of our Altero uh, blog. So altero.com slash hyper-v and slash VMware respectively. If you're looking for more information, um, educational material on those platforms. Additionally, we've got a whole slew of social options here, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube if you're interested in any of those. 
Uh, on top of that, you can always connect with Thomas and I on our social feeds if you have any follow-up questions. And uh, be sure to keep an eye out for uh, that follow-up blog post coming here in a week or two. I uh, also want to say thanks, Thomas, for taking the time to uh, to help us out today and give us all this great information. So thank you, sir. Well, thank you for having me. Not a problem. Always happy. And with that, I'll let everybody go. Hope you enjoyed today's webinar and hope to see you on the next one. Have a good day, everyone.